I'll, but the first thing to do is just introduce yourself. And okay. Come. Okay. <coughs> um, me where you're from, how long you've been doing extension, and maybe what some of the different positions you've held. Yeah, and let me ask, but before we start, Chris, maybe we are filming. Yeah. Do you want me to look at you? Do you want me to look at the, where should I look? Uh, you can look here at me, and I'll just kind of stand behind the camera, so it's easy. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, my name is Janine Creighton, and I'm currently at Oregon State University. When I started in extension, though, I started at Washington State University, and I had just completed my master's in wildlife biology and um, wasn't sure what I was going to do. Thought that I would be um, out in the fields, you know, putting putting um, leg tags or whatever on, on, on ducks or animals or doing whatever. And, um, and then I, I was asked to fill in at the extension office down the hall. I had no idea what a cooperative extension was. Um, and um, I, uh, uh, that's how I got started on it. So, um, and then from there, I right currently am at Oregon State University in the College of Forestry. So, that's that's how I got started. Um, um, probably one of the best pieces of advice. Well, I I was really fortunate that I had somebody that that um, gave me a lot of freedom, um, um, but. Uh, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got in terms of extension and developing programs for extension audiences was um, to just talk to people. And when I first did one of my first programs ever on developing wildlife habitat for forest landowners, I was still kind of coming off this graduate school kind of lecture. Um, you know, everybody needs to know everything about, you know, this topic on wildlife. They need to know nutrition. They need to know why. You know, I mean, they, it, it was just like, you know, they need to know all this stuff that I know. And um, um, it was obviously not appropriate. <laughs> um, I, I got through my first program and the person that had asked me to come in, the Extension Forester, said that was fine. That was great. But just talk to people. They just talk to them. Um, it, it's not like you're. It's not a matter of dumbing down information. That's not what I meant at, at, or mean at all. It's just think about you know if you're coming from right out of graduate school or even un, un, undergraduate, and you, you you just have all this science and all this stuff in your mind, and you have to kind of realize you got to translate it like you're talking to your mother or your grandmother or your grandfather or something and that understand that they people don't need to know everything that you know about something um, they just need to know stuff to make the right decisions that was a really good piece of information because I think otherwise I would have it would have been exhausting for me and um, I probably would not have been as effective that kind of helped me to be feel more comfortable with people and just you know, talk talk to people. So that was probably a, that was a good piece of advice very early on in my career that I think was I've lived by. So, what um, what advice would you give to someone getting started as an extension agent or as an extension specialist, especially people who maybe don't have the same? They're not walking into a position that's kind of established. Like, what would be kind of the day to day things to get started on? Oh boy, that's a really good question. Um, just in terms of, you could walk into your office for the first day and you have no idea where to begin. Is that kind of what you're mm -hmm. what you're asking me? Um, yeah. So uh, 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 another thing that somebody else told me about extension that is that it's the only job where. Um, um, Nobody can really tell you what it is you have to do, except that in five years they're going to evaluate you on how well you've done it. And I, that's really true. You just got to relax with it. But um, the best thing you can do is, is talk to people, listen you know, to people. Um, don't be afraid to ask questions because everybody, nobody comes into extension knowing exactly how to proceed. Um, nobody does. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> so um, asking questions um, um, a lot, 
of you know what the people that you might be replacing what how, how do they approach things what would they suggest I think a really good thing to do to at the very beginning is to try to build your client base find out who the people are that you'll be serving if there's advisory boards really work with those boards to help inform at least at the beginning the direction of your program and some of the focus areas start small you know even if it's just with one little workshop um, and then once you start kind of doing that you can start building that bigger program with a big P as opposed to a little P which is just maybe a, 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 a three-hour workshop um, but how would that fit into a larger larger program um, you don't have to do it all at once nobody is expecting you to come in and have this huge program already ready to go um, so that's I guess just kind of start small start with what you know and what's comfortable what you're comfortable with but understand that you're going to need to be able to branch out from that at some point um, another thing is you can't be everything for everybody um, um, and that's an, another important lesson that I learned is you'll have people coming up and saying oh you know you're working on this you know who you should talk to you should talk to this person or you should talk to that person and it can be totally overwhelming um, and you have to just pick and choose what what you can do at any time and not not try to do it all I don't know if that makes sense but that's yeah it does what um what do you think about like work life and home life and everything? How do you find some balance and keep yourself from being too stressed out? Yeah, that's a that's a tough one because in extension work, at least in in the early days, I don't I don't do as much travel anymore. But travel is, you know, um, you're, you're 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 working weekends a lot. You're working evenings. Um, depending on who your clients are, you know, if they're working people, then you're holding programs and doing events that they can attend so it might be after work on the weekends um, you just have to realize that that's just that's just <laughs> the 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 life and um, you know you can make choices and decisions on on um, when you want to you know um, what kind of I, I guess I want to say that and this probably a lot of people have said this um, um, in myself at the beginning I just did whatever I needed to do or had to do um, I didn't spend spend a whole lot of time thinking about the work balance and life balance I do now more than I'm older but then I don't do nearly as much of the day-to-day -day programming as I used to do I'm more administration stuff so um, what advice I you know that's a that's a good way everybody's going to be different I think you know if you can tolerate working 14 days in a row then great but you do need to take time for yourself obviously and you need to be able to you know if you have people that you can hire that can help take up some of that work that's great you know if you can if you can pass on some of that um, and delegate responsibilities to other people find that one person or those two people who are really awesome and you feel totally comfortable but it's, it's going to take a while to build up to that. So, um, I don't know. No, that's good. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I think that's covered most of my questions. There. Yeah, I mean, I just, there's, it's probably, probably here an awful lot of the same things from everybody. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, I don't I, I, I don't I don't think so I think I think as you you know and maybe this might be true more now than it was when I first started but um, partnerships are going to be so important and the sooner you can develop those with people um, and the sooner you can recognize when there's a potential turf war <laughs> the better off you're gonna you're, you're gonna be and just because there's somebody there's a really great idea um, and you think boy I really want to you know I I, I want to work on this if 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 it's being done somewhere else 
and it seems effective, uh, there's nothing wrong with saying, okay, I don't need to deal with that because it's someone's handling that. It's okay to say that, in my opinion, or partner with them, but you don't ever feel like, oh, there's a great program and extension needs to be at the forefront of it because that's not necessarily um, always going to be appropriate or effective. And uh, so that would be a piece of advice. That's good. And then um, lastly, I to think about it. Mm -hmm. What about for grants and stuff? Like, what do you think, what has been your experience with grants? Like, how have you found them, or has there been any unlikely sources or unlikely avenues or things like that? Um, what would you recommend for? finding your way towards that for so yeah that's that's a really good question so um, I've spent most of my career grant funded in the early days I was not responsible for getting those grants someone else was um, but then in in the later days um, I have been responsible for that and I think um, really looking for the opportunities w one thing that that I have to say is um, um, just because a grant is based around a specific discipline, um, for example, I can give my own example, which is a fire. Okay, I'm not a fire ecologist, um, but I do know extension, and I do have partners, or and new partners and people that understood fire and lived in that fire world. So, um, going after grants, bringing all those people together. Um, um, and then pursuing those grant opportunities has helped to keep me funded for a, a, a number of years. So um, it was kind of looking to see where can where can I fit into a particular program or a granting opportunity, and who do I know that can come in and kind of help fulfill some of so we all can fulfill parts of that grant requirement. So just because I'm not a fire ecologist or a forester doesn't mean that I can't administer a program that deals with fire and forests. So <laughs> yeah, um, I guess that's, you know, and just be persistent because you're going to not get more than you get. But it's, it is an important component. Anything else, Dan? Nope. That's a good piece of book.